Okay, welcome back. We're going to see if we can't get old St. Nick done. Uh, we're getting mounted on our old trusty vice. And, uh, I can get a screw in it. There ain't much to it. Let's, let's start knock that little plug off. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, there ain't much of a plug on it right there. But we just kind of sh trying to shape the point of his hat. You know, it ain't super pointy, but... Yeah, kind of round it off and then start separating his hat from his head and his, you know, separate his face from his uh, beard and his beard from his jacket. So just a lot of drawing, uh, you know. The old world Santa, some people call them little wizards or gnomes or whatever, but he's kind of what we consider an old world Santa. You know, he ain't our traditional Santa, more the old world style. But, uh, yeah, we probably spend more time on the face is where your most detail is. Uh, you know, like I say, as far as the rest of it, it's just going around separating stuff. Uh, that's pretty much all the carving. The biggest job is uh, finding your creases and stuff and separating it. And, you know, like on, on Santa, though, he's going to have a little more detail in his face. Uh, so... Whether you use uh, the chainsaw to put the, you know, the hair in your face. Uh, sometimes you can use a, a router bit or something if you want a little more finer hair. So it really depends on, you know, which tool you want to use. Uh, but here we are, you know, like I say, just going around separating his, his hair from his face and carve his mouth out just a little bit. Like I say, it's all there. It just needs a little separation. So, uh, what, that's what we're doing, is trying to give it a little extra depth. And you can see how much you've come out just with the, uh, you know, just with the shadow of the little bit deeper cuts. enough fur on his face you know we're using a saw here just uh furry like you would uh you know a bear or something you know uh just go in and think about direction though all fur has direction you don't want to go sideways on something that the hair should be going down or and usually try not to make it too straight always try to give it a little bit of a either an S or a C curve to it. Uh, it just looks more natural than super straight stuff. So you can see I'm separating his belt from his jacket, drawing around everything, draw around his arms, his collar. We go around the base. That's the fur on the jacket. You want to separate it from the jacket and then the bottom from the base. I say they ain't a lot to these things. I'm using an eye tool to go in and uh, put a little bit of depth cut in his uh, eyes there. Underneath his eyes, the old wrinkles and stuff. This is kind of like where you would use a V-chisel or something or anything that will make a, a crease line. You know, uh, the dovetail bits, whether it's the saber bits or a router bit, you know, doing his eyebrows, all that kind of stuff. You know, it, you know, it does a real good job at all that kind of stuff. So, like I say, this is one tool doing multiple jobs. So now I got a real small eye tool for some putting these pupils in. See if we can't wake him up. Like I say, you know, they don't never wake up until you give them the eyeballs. I got just a little flame type saber bit in the Dremel tool, which is, uh, you know, going in, give him a little nostril hole, opening stuff up, softening up his the nose there between uh, that and the mustache, his eyes and stuff. It, you know, quick softening of some of the angles and stuff in there. Soften the corners of his eyes up.
Well, you're going to take the big angle grinder and clean up the base. No. You know, this Santa Claus could be carved without a base. He could be sitting flat down. But it gives you a, a little more height that you don't have to carve, which a lot of carvers like. It gets you carving up off the ground. You know, it gives you a place to mount stuff a little better without having to have a buffer zone with your saw in the, the ground. You know, that also helps. Here we are just using our nylon bristle brush to give him a nice wipe down. So here we are, we got our Santa pretty much carved out, and uh, we're going to give him a little bit of color, you know, or defuzzing. You know, if we were going to burn him, I would just, you know, burn his hair and stuff, flap it out, and uh, any of the dark creases, you know, you burn sand back out. But I say all these, we're going to be doing a quick stain job, so we can make them separate a little bit better. I use more stain and then colored dyes. I do have some colored dyes I like to use. Yeah, Santa's, we use the stain method and then we use dye or paint. We, we dry brush some. They, it probably looked best dry brush, but that's one that it takes longer. I'm going to put the Santa Flex brush on him, soften him up a little bit. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Our main things, I got some dyes here that I made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. I use basically water for the 90% of it, mix you know the dye with water. It's real easy to keep clean in my airbrush. But what I probably use even more than the colors is men wax stain. I like golden oak. It's probably my favorite light color. And then I use fentanyl and black walnut for my dark colors. Men wax make hundreds of different colors. I basically use two, 90% of what I do. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush, or you can get them on eBay. Well, that's about what we use for coloring our carvings. Hope this helps. Throw us a little color on Santa here. We got our 
dark walnut out again. Fist and start spraying his glove, making it real dark. Then we'll go around all the low spots, just drawing it in, separating everything, make it stand out. Once we get everything kind of laid out, separated, we'll break out the color. Uh, you pick whatever color you want. Our main two color for settings, though, are usually green and red. But uh, we decided to go with a little red today. And we're using the, the water dye, which is pretty transparent. Uh, you know, this is one coat. Normally when I do them, I put a couple of coats on them to make it even a little bit brighter because it'll suck it in. But it'll... You know, once you get your your darks down, just start throwing the red to it until you are uh, satisfied with it. You know, that's about it. I hope y'all have a good one. Ho, ho, ho.